What's up guys, we're back here at uh, Gord's Garage again with Sonny and our uh, beloved cameraman Jeff Chu. Um, we are going to do a breakdown today of uh, the fan favorite, uh, the knee bar that was performed by um, Ariane Lipsky in, most, in the most recent UFC or one of the most recent UFCs. Um, we did a breakdown of Jack Hermanson versus Kelvin Gastelum uh, as far as what he should have as far as what he actually did versus what Kelvin actually could have did to uh, to avoid the Ashigurami and not end up getting submitted and staying in the pocket and going to punches or you know counter offense. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. You can check it out. Uh, that one's already up. Uh, we're going to be uploading this one in a day or so. Um, as long as you guys keep giving me content to break down, I'll keep doing it. As long as you guys are enjoying this, I'll keep doing it. And uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway around 5,000 subscribers. So, you know, you guys know I love giveaways. So let me know what you, uh, you want to see um, as far as me giving some, stuff, some free stuff away. Maybe it could be a sweat rash guard. Yeah, a sweaty rash guard with fungus growing on it that's been sitting in, my, uh, in the back of my car for months. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, this is pretty interesting because... Um, you're, you don't really see too many leg locks in the UFC, but you are starting to see them a lot in the women's divisions. I think pretty sure Mackenzie Dern hit a knee bar. Um, there's been some people hitting toe holds. I think someone recently, I think it might have been Mackenzie, had the most uh, first toe hold in the women's division. Um, so you're definitely starting to see more leg locks in MMA, and especially in the women's division. Uh, women's division is now coming up with the knee bars and the toe hold. So this is very interesting to see how. Uh, the progression of leg locks in mixed martial arts and specifically women's mixed martial arts. Alright, so we're going to go in. Um, we're going to look at first initially how she triangled her legs and what um, and uh, her, how her opponent triangled her legs and what she did to actually extend the knee bar and then we're going to go into what her opponent should have did um, to start to, get, uh, start to get her off balance and how she should have triangled her legs. Okay, so you notice she was in a calf slicer where her opponent threw her leg to the outside and started trying to come in and pull her back into her and start going in for the calf slicer. Okay, now, you have to understand that her opponent couldn't, can finish a calf slicer uh, from this position, but because her legs are triangled on the inside, she actually exposes her own leg to a knee bar. And because she's in a calf slicer, she basically puts herself in a double trouble position where now she has no ability to roll out of the knee bar defensively because of this, uh, of this calf slicer. So if I extend her leg, for example, when she tries to move and switch the angle, her own leg in the calf slicer traps her in place. So if you look at the actual angle of what happened here, Ariane from here, actually did something really interesting. So she stepped two legs up like so and started sitting back on her partner. Now notice, if I just try to pull her leg back straight towards me, just back heel strongly, and she brings her she brings her uh, her heel in. It's not an easy thing to pull the leg towards me. Okay, you can you can do it, but it's not an easy thing. So instead, what Ariane did was she put the knee to one side instead of having it directly in the center line. She put the knee to one side and she flared the heel out past the line of the knee, like so. This takes the leg out of angle. So now from here, when she went in wrist deep. When she went to go strong back heel, the leg's way out of angle, and it's easy now for her to go in and extend. And now from here, all she had to do was start to bridge into it and arch backwards and sit into her, and she got a strong finish with a knee bar. And because of the way that her legs were configured, this leg now is completely trapped, and she's sitting on top of her, so when she goes to move from here, basically have all the power in the world and all the time in the world to bridge in and get a strong knee bar. Okay, so the legs were figured uh, figure forward in the wrong direction. She exposed her own legs. You have to understand there's an art to being able to attack your opponent's legs while also being able to hide your legs. And this is not how you do it. So she came in, instead of just trying to pull straight back with the leg in line, she pushed the knee to one hip and she brought the heel outside the line of the knee. So now she went to go resist, she was pulling, pulling, pulling. She took it out of alignment and then it immediately came right up like so. Now she took a grip on the heel brought everything in and easily extended the uh, leg for the win. Okay, and actually got a pretty bad pop as well. All right, so that's what she that's what she did initially to get the knee bar. Now let's look at what her opponent should have been doing initially going for the calf slicer uh, to avoid putting her legs in that compromising position. Okay, so as we saw before, 
Her opponent had her legs figure forward like so. She went to go for a calf slicer, but she had her legs triangled to the middle. Okay, now, I'm not gonna say this is wrong. You can do this, but you have to make sure that you don't expose your partner, your knee past your partner's hip line like so. So if at any point you're gonna have a calf slicer in place like so, you have to keep a short knee with the knee that's in between your partner's legs. The leg is in danger. Okay, so whenever I have a calf slicer here, I can't extend my left leg and allow her to sit back on top of me. There always has to be a space between her hips and my hips. And I use a wedge of my knee to do that. So now when she gets to sit back and attack a knee bar, I can always bump her forward, get her hands to the floor, and then I can start sitting up and using this calf slicer to start going into either calf slicers here, or now she has no ability to sit back and when she goes to attack my leg, now I can always open it. Or now we're in a very different spot. She's not on top of me anymore. She's forward with her hands in the ground. Or now I can go into the calf slicer or back kicks like so. Or, worst case scenario, if she is gonna sit back on top of me, so sit back, I triangle my legs to the outside, okay? This is a, this is a very good way that you can keep your legs relatively safe. Okay, she can still go and attack toe holes and things from here, but she's much lower percentage because she has no control of your leg. But this is one way that you can keep your legs much safer going for this calf slicer, having your legs triangled on the outside versus having your legs triangled on the inside because now there's no knee bar. So now I can even pull my partner back on top of me and you can start getting real calf slice damage here where now from here you can go in and start attacking your partner and there's no damage or there's no danger of her sitting into a, a very, very tight knee bar on you. Okay, and in addition, we can always bump her down towards the floor and use that to start coming up and going in for either uh, attacks on our partner's legs or attacks on our, attacks on our partner's back or switching off and going into attacks on our partner's other leg. Okay, so we always have to remember whenever we have a calf slicer from this position, we're most of the time looking to triangle our legs to the outside. And if we're not triangling, our legs to the outside, it's absolutely imperative that we keep our partner off balance with their hands to the floor and we keep a wedge between my hips and my partner's hips. It's unacceptable for me to have my legs triangle to the inside and to have my partner's hips sitting back on top of mine. Just sit on me, like so. This is no good, because now this leg is gonna get exposed every single time. So we have to make sure that if we have legs triangled inside, I have a wedge between my hips and hers. So when she goes to sit back and knee bar me, she can't. Now I can always off balance her, start getting her down to the floor and start going into other various attacks and other various ways. All right, hope that was sick for you guys. Subscribe. All right, so hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Uh, it's pretty much been a learning experience for us. Let us know as far as anything you guys want to see, um, any suggestions you guys have to make. This is our second episode, uh, so everyone's kind of learning. Uh, we just like like set out here for like an hour while like Jeff hooked up like all this fancy camera and sound bars and, and work. Um, so it's uh, it's a work in progress. It's probably it's like probably ten probably gonna be like a ten minute video. It took us like two hours to do like how to pull all the good cars out of the garage and stuff. But um, you know I'm just happy to help you guys out and give you guys some free content when I can. Oh, also, I've been drinking kombucha, so uh, if any of you guys want to send me kombuchas and free kombuchas, especially with like little cool guys on them, that would be great. If you guys want to sponsor us for kombucha, because kombucha saved my life recently, it's been helping with my nausea a lot, so I've been buying it, so I'm more than happy to just buy it, but if anyone, if anybody has a kombucha brand that's out there that's going to help me and wants to, uh, to work with me, our email's in the link somewhere below. Hopefully, um, and also, Hey Sunny also has a channel that we have to uh, keep supporting. Most of the most of our vlogs, I think, are going to be on there, just like day to day stuff, um, like more of the funny stuff, and then more of the content for like Jiu Jitsu and match breakdowns and stuff will be on this channel. So um, it's pretty much our daily life on one side, and then the professional side, well, semi pro on the other side. Yeah. People want to see you crying in a shower Mommy. because the water is too cold. That's what people want to see. I don't use cold water. I don't like it. <laughs> Let me see the photo. Uh oh. Because you want to be a lumberjack, right? Kind of. <laughs> Mostly what I would like to do with my life is just load big rocks into the back of my truck and transport them from the place to place. <laughs> this is so true. What's I gonna do when you retire? 
Hopefully.